his quickness, leverage, his determination, desire. And that what made Robert special. He wanted to get to the quarterback, try to separate them from the ball. What he did was perfected what he could do to the point where uh, he was unblockable. One of the things I told the scouts, if you draft him, you're going to keep him. As a defensive player, you love watching good pass rushers. He's got a nice spin move, he's got some speed, and he also has power. I got to figure out how to dodge Robert Mathis all night and trying to complete a few passes, so I hope I can win that challenge. Robert Mathis, the master of the sack. I mean, whatever it took, uh, he had to bite scratch, even pinch him. Just to, to, had to get some kind of pressure on him. His mindset, uh, his leadership, his passion for football, his work ethic, he's relentless. After watching Robert and watching his work happens, him being this successful was not a surprise at all. Okay, Heinz Ward joins us now. Heinz, Robert Mathis and Dwight Freeney played together for a decade in Indianapolis. Freeney has since moved on to San Diego. Mathis at age 32, getting it done maybe better than ever with the Colts. Yeah, and playing the Colts defense, those two guys were the only guys you really had to worry about because you knew both of them are great pass rushers, but we felt like running the ball, we would go run the ball more towards Dwight Freeney's side because he was more concerned with getting sacks and really not stopping the run. Whereas Mathis, he was a more complete guy because not only was he a great pass rusher, he was a, gr he was a great run stopper as well. And, and at the age of 32, like you said, he's still causing havoc in the backfield. Well, you would know you had to block yes. tight ends your, uh, <laughs> as a blocking tight end all the time. But, you know, it's interesting. I really think that, that Mathis this year has a shot at Strahan's record. And here's why. In the past, he's had to play on the left side. And, and of course, Franny would play on the other side. What I didn't know, we just learned this weekend, is that he's left-handed. And his whole career, all he wanted to do is play on the right-hand side. They finally move him to that side, the rush in, the Terrell suck side mm -hmm. of, of the thing. And he's got 11 and a half sacks after seven games. So this is an opportunity for this guy to be featured, and he's taking advantage of it. Info we just got, Arian Foster with a hamstring injury will play and will start for the Texans. And Ben Tate, other running back, bad ribs, he also is available. So that's something Mathis will have to deal with. Good news for Case Keenum, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> certainly is. And back to New York we go and Dan. All right, Bob, uh, set this scene here, Tony. You're coaching the Colts. One of your scouts hands you a tape. It's Robert Mathis. What are you thinking? I didn't know anything about him. It says, hey, he's a little guy. He's from a small school, but you have to see this tape. We put the tape on. It's grainy. It's from all these different angles. I didn't really want to watch it, but the more you see, you saw this guy playing faster than anybody. There was about 200 plays like this, Dan. Kickoff coverages, punt coverages, fumbles, calls, sacks. I said, is this guy for real? And, you know, he was. It was the best highlight tape other than Barry Sanders that I've ever seen. But the fact that it was a small school, that's probably why he lasted until the fifth round. And he's so quiet, too, right? <laughs> yeah, and memo to Chris, he got 75 sacks on the left side, so he did okay <laughs> on the left side, too.